Welcome back to part six on zeros of a polynomial. We are almost done. <laughs> We've got irrational zeros theorem left. And basically what this is saying is you can't write your zero as a, an integer or a fraction. So it will have square roots in it. And it's saying in this particular situation in example six that we have x is equal to negative 3 plus the square root of 11. This is an irrational conjugate, which means it has its pair, x equals negative 3 minus root 11, because irrational zeros and complex zeros always come in conjugate pairs. So if I set this equal to 0, I'll have x plus 3 minus root 11 and x plus 3 plus root 11. And these will both now equal 0. And then I would multiply them together to find out what the quadratic would be that would create these two outputs using the quadratic formula. This will give me 2 factors, again, equal to 0. I'll have an x plus 3, I'm just dropping these down, minus root 11, and x plus 3 plus root 11. Now I want you to notice that the x plus 3 is the same in both of the groupings. So if I multiply x plus 3 to x plus 3, that's just x plus 3 squared. So I know that I'll have an x squared plus 6x plus 9. The next thing you need to notice is, is that since these are conjugate pairs, their signs will be opposite for the second part, but the radical is the same, which means this will be minus 11 at the end. So it's like a difference of squares. You can think about it almost like that when you multiply them together. So that will give me an x squared plus 6x minus 2. Since I know that x squared plus 6x minus 2 takes care of two of my zeros of the quadratic, I can find out what the other two are. I could do this two different ways. I could graph it, which would be the obvious choice, and I would r highly recommend you do that on a test. But the other thing you could do is you could do polynomial long division to see what's left. You have to do polynomial long division on these because this is a degree 2 as your divisor. So my divisor is x squared plus 6x minus 2. My dividend is x to the 4th plus 6x to the 3rd minus 7x squared minus 30x plus 10. I'm going to use some scratch paper here over on the side. Take the first term of my dividend, divide it by the first term of the divisor. That gives me x squared. Put that in my quotient and then multiply that through. That will give me an x to the fourth, a plus 6x to the third, and a minus 2x squared. Changing my signs. and combining terms, the first two will add to zero, the second two will add to zero, and the last one will be negative five x squared, dropping the negative 30 x down and the positive 10. I'll take the first term of my dividend, divide it by the first term of my divisor, that gives me a negative 5. I'll put the negative 5 in my quotient. Then I multiply to the x squared, so that will be a negative 5x squared. The 5 multiplied to the 6x will give me a negative 30x. 
and negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. And this is a really good sign because all the terms are matching except for the signs. We have to change the signs and add. When I do that, they will all add to 0 and I will have a remainder of 0, which is what I was hoping for. And now I know what my other factors are. So now I'm going to rewrite my polynomial. It was a q of x, so q of x is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 2 times x squared minus 5. Now, I can find the two factors for x squared minus 5 equals 0. That means that x squared equals 5, and x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. So my zeros of the polynomial will be four irrational <laughs> irrational zeros, which seems a little strange. They won't be obvious roots by graphing it, but you would at least have a fairly good idea of where they would fall on your graph. So when this happens, you still have to remember how to do polynomial long division. You cannot disregard it because just looking at your calculator every time will only show you the approximate solutions. They will not give you the exact solutions like we have here. In example 7, it asks us to graph p of x equals x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 7x squared plus 5x plus 10. And I have gone ahead and graphed this in Desmos for you so you can see where the interesting roots are. Negative 1 is one of my roots and so is 2. And so before you try and do anything fancy, just use synthetic division and divide out the negative 1 and the 2 and show that those are both zeros of the polynomial first. So I'll start out with 1, negative 1, negative 7, 5, and 10, and then I will divide out my negative 1 as one of my zeros or roots. Dropping the 1 down, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. Negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. Negative 1 times 10 is negative 10, and we get a 0. So now I have found one of the factors. So I'm going to break that off, and I'm going to list that as my new p of x polynomial written in factored form. So I know that x plus 1 is one of my binomial factors. The remaining portion of my polynomial is sitting right here. So I'm just going to start right over again and use that as my new synthetic division problem, and I'm going to show that 2 is a factor or a 0 as well. Dropping the 1 down, I'm basically recycling my coefficients, and it's very convenient doing this. So dropping the 1 down, 2 times 1 is 2, negative 1 plus 2 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 10 plus negative 10 is 0. And so once again, I've proven that one of my factors is a 2. So I'm going to kick that over here into my polynomial. I know that x minus 2 is one of the binomials or zeros of p of x. The remaining piece is in degree 2 because this is my constant term, my degree 1 term, and my degree 2 term. So this would be x squared minus 5. If I want to find the zeros of this quadratic, x squared equals 5, take the square root of both sides, 
Since it's an even root, I will have x equals plus or minus root 5. So if I wanted to write these as irrational binomials, I would have x plus root 5 and x minus root 5. In some homework, they want you to show all the factors all listed out like this, but sometimes your homework systems will say, we just want you to write them as integer coefficients, which means that these would not work. Those are not integer coefficients. Those are irrational numbers, in which case you would have to write this as x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x squared minus 5. And that would be absolutely sufficient.